Are you a predictor or an ideator? Many people obsess over whether they're a sensor or an intuitive, but not all intuitives are the same. An NJ is very different from an NP. We like to call NI users predictors and NE users ideators. If you're an SP, you're also a predictor, but a baby predictor. Likewise, if you're an SJ, you're a baby ideator. But we'll be making a complimentary video on SE and SI, so please subscribe to stay tuned. To understand the perceiving axes, we must understand the point of internalization. An extroverted function is not internalized. It's exploratory, accepting, and unbiased, more breadth than depth. Since it's not internalized, it's not retained in your internal subjective system. It comes and goes much like your external environment. In contrast, we do internalize our introverted functions. Thus, an introverted function is discerning. It whittles things down based on some subjective criteria, like preference or likelihood. New information must fit within our subjective system. When the external environment changes, our subjective retention remains. Thus, introverted functions tend to be more consistent than extroverted functions. To understand NI and NE, we must look at the point of internalization. NI intakes at the intuitive level and NE at the sensory level. For NI, the sensory is not internalized. A chair is the physical qualities of said chair in the current moment. Objects and experiences are more or less what they are. The predictor experiences the entire current concrete reality without bias. In other words, the predictor sees the entire metaphorical room. With this wealth of information, the predictor internalizes at the intuitive level. The intuitive level is where the subjective biases begin. Introverted intuition sees patterns and trends. From these patterns, it extrapolates into the future, forming a clear image of the future. Predictors do not internalize the sensory, nor have a subjective sensory database, so they do not compare new sensory information with past sensory information. Instead, they fit new sensory information into an intuitive pattern. They internalize intuitive impressions, patterns, and predictions. The current concrete reality and past intuitive impressions form the predictor's experience. With high NI users, they're going to be so steeped in their intuitive impressions that they'll have very little time to be in touch with the concrete reality. Moving on to the ideators, who have an almost opposite process. Introverted sensing does store sensory information in an internal database. Over time, more sensory information makes this database more complex. Themes and categories start emerging. These aren't objective categories, but rather the ideator's subjective associations. Objects and experiences are always attached to subjective, biased matter. With bias comes importance, so SI users are not experiencing the entire current concrete reality. Instead, they're experiencing the subjective associations that aspects of the external reality conjured. Perhaps they notice a table, which they associate with support, and the lamp, which they associate with knowledge, and now their NE starts thinking about funding for public education. Noticing only the subjective aspects of certain things is how NE is able to ideate so prolifically. Perhaps they'll refer back to the lamp and think about saving money with solar energy. Or perhaps they'll think cross-contextually about funding in other areas, like healthcare, diverting completely away from the objects that triggered these thoughts in the first place. Often, the minds of ideators tend to be intruded by truly bizarre thoughts like, maybe in the future, teachers will just be really smart people telepathically conveying their ideas to the masses. In contrast, NI might come to think about education funding after repeat exposures to SC context. For example, they might see a dilapidated classroom. They notice the entire room, all the concrete details, all the repeat examples of dilapidated things, and then think about funding. Or perhaps their school is affluent, but they face a few repeated examples over time of the school overspending and running out of money for things. Then the NI user predicts a future dilapidated classroom and may think about funding. Predictors also tend to work their way up to ever more general and all-encompassing ideas. So from there, they might think about the nature of money or capitalism. 
Just as SE users hold no bias towards the sensory, NE users hold no bias towards the intuitive. Ideators do not internalize the intuitive, so they do not compare new conceptual information to past conceptual information, nor is new conceptual information formed on top of a sophisticated internal structure of concepts. The process is more connective, bouncing off of one idea to the next and not retaining any of it. Well, perhaps retaining it in the form of an ephemeral memory, but not incorporating it in a way to have structural relation to other past concepts. Ideas come and go as if they're objects in the external environment. What's internalized here is the sensory. Since ideators have no bias towards the conceptual, they're not naturally predictive. With years of experience strengthening SI and with the help of other kind of processes such as TI, any users can achieve a mock in I where they come up with many ideas then cross them out in a process of elimination to arrive at a prediction. But as you can see, this is not its natural function. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. This is Calypso and you're watching INTJ and INFP Coffee. We're trying to come up with really accurate yet digestible content and definitions for the eight kind of processes. So if you like these videos, please subscribe and consider supporting our work on Patreon. You can find countless examples of predictors and ideators in the real world. And remember, if you're an SP, you're also a predictor. And if you're an SJ, you're also an ideator. If you're still having trouble determining your type, we offer cognitive type assessments on our website, cognitive8.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.